Hello, welcome to another weekly update. How is everyone? Survived Microsoft Ignite? It's uh, It's been a really busy week, isn't it? Um, exciting week, because Microsoft Ignite weeks are exciting. There's a lot of energy, um, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of sessions, a lot to consume, a lot to digest. Um, I still have plenty more to kind of take away from Ignite. Um, I'm a little bit behind, but not actually quite as bad as normal, maybe. Um, managed to get a couple of sessions in every day um, well more than that actually so um, yes yeah, so that's been really good and I managed to watch the keynote um, in its entirety live as well which was definitely an experience if you haven't if you haven't watched the keynote you should go and watch the keynote um, because it is unlike previous keynotes I think keynotes are kind of interesting for me because they're not I'm not really the intended audience for keynotes. It, it's press, it's market analysts, it's the general public. It isn't people who follow this stuff every day. So you don't come to the keynote for really big announcements or anything like that. Um, but it is all. I think it's all, always useful to, to listen to the keynotes and to attend the keynotes to see the direction for the upcoming year and see what Satch is saying and thinking and to listen to the things he says. Every word is chosen very carefully. Um, and means something and so uh, it is worth listening to those keynotes. This one was a bit different. Uh, it started off per normal um, and um, with with Satya and, and that is worth listening to. Uh, I mean it's all, worth, it's all worth watching and listening to, don't get me wrong, but then Satya passed to um, Alex Kitman who is in charge of the kind of mixed reality um, stuff at Microsoft and then it went a bit weird. It went a bit mixed reality um, lots of examples of mixed reality introduction of Microsoft Mesh and then it all went a bit psychedelic and trippy and uh, I'm not quite sure where we ended. I think we ended on a beach in the desert around a fire dancing um, yeah I mean yeah for, for a keynote it was pretty weird so um, yeah if that sounds interesting you should go and watch that anyway so many things to talk about more blog posts this week than I can actually talk about in this um, kind of weekly update session so I'm not going to try and cover them all um, but you can go to my blog and look at them all. There's quite a few. I've picked out three big ones I want to talk through and then um, another one from Microsoft. So uh, we can go through those. So the really big news, I think, for me, the really big one this um, this week was the announcement of Teams Interop for Azure Communication Services. And for me, this is like the standout biggest announcement of Ignite, um, certainly in the Teams platform development space. There have not been a lot of announcements in the Teams platform development space this time around. Um, so there's this, there's some power platform stuff, um, which is good, don't get me wrong, um, but it's uh, nothing huge there either. Um, but, um, but yeah, and that's it really. So Teams Interop for Azure Communication Services. So I've talked about Azure Communication Services before. What this Teams Interop functionality uh, will allow you to do is join an ACS client into a Teams meeting, a native Teams meeting, where other Teams people have joined via the Teams client. So people in the Teams client can join a meeting, people in the ACS client can join a meeting, they can see each other, they can do voice video chat with each other. Really powerful, opens up a ton of interesting scenarios for kind of B2C, um, kind of public versus organizational contacts. So loads and loads to dig into there. Um, that's the first blog post I want to talk to actually. So let's do that. Um, yeah, I mean, the detail is in here. Um, this I keep talking through. <laughs> this I keep talking through. Um, this is kind of where ACS sits in terms of where Teams sits and um, Dynamics I'm going to talk about in a minute and your custom application here. This is your ACS application. Um, so this is kind of a good way of understanding it. Anyway, uh, Teams Interop, this is how it works. If you're already familiar with ACS stuff, then uh, this is kind of the only real difference. Uh, it's a different type of join and uh, what you pass is the Teams web join URL. So literally the same web join URL that you would use to join in the Teams client, in the web client, um, just like in a website that you give out to people who don't have the Teams client, exactly the same. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, you can do it in ACS. It looks exactly as you'd expect it to in Teams. So this user comes in, this name is just, just the name you give it in ACS shows up in the participant list just exactly the same. So really exciting for how simple this is to use in ACS, how powerful it is when it shows up in Teams, how native it is. Um, and so really excited for the kind of functionality that this will bring. 
it's in public preview at the moment um, so you should be able to use it but just not in production so you can go and play with it if you want to if you're brand new to uh, ACS Azure Communication Services and you want to write ACS applications but you don't know where to start um, then you're in luck and that is my second uh, pick if you like of this week which is this um, a learn Azure Communication Services uh, course if you like or page or series of blog posts whatever you want to call it at learnacs.dev uh, so this is a list of blog posts I've put together to help you get up to speed quickly with Azure Communication Services it's one post a day. Uh, we're into day three. Today is actually day four. So uh, as soon as I finish recording this, I will be posting this day four one, which is Azure Communication Services versus Microsoft Teams, the discussion. Um, and then from tomorrow, we're going to be actually writing code. Um, to be fair, this one is actually quite a bit of code as well. Um, let's just look at this one. Uh, this goes through creating a function app uh, to, to issue um, tokens for ACS. So all the detail is in there uh, and uh, yep, so you can sort of see all the stuff, all the code, like, you know, the, the, the point of these is to kind of get you something that's up and working with all the code you need, but just the minimal, minimal amount of code so it's up and working and then talk through kind of what it actually does, how it actually works so you can understand it as well if you want to. But I do it that way around so that if you don't really care, you just want to get it working and come back and figure it out later, you can get to this point and then carry on with your lives. Um, but you've got something working that you can use later. So um, that's going to be the case for all of these. Uh, so all of these days that are coming up uh, will have code as well. So um, yeah, that sounds. if that sounds like a, a useful thing, then um, bookmark learnacs.dev and, um, and every day a new post will appear. Okay, other things. Um, so this, again, big announcement at Ignite. Is it bigger than the Azure Communication Services Teams Intro one? Mm, good question. Um, it's it's almost maybe it's as big or or not quite as big. Maybe I don't know. It, it's still pretty important. First party integration between Microsoft Teams and Dynamics three six five um, for chat and voice. So calling uh, Microsoft Teams, use, making Microsoft Teams calls right from within Microsoft Dynamics, which is not something that is possible today. Um, it's not possible to embed the Teams client inside other applications today, except that Dynamics is doing it. So that is interesting. Uh, so I've done a blog post and a video about this because it's kind of really interesting. There's the actual integration between Teams and Dynamics 365. There's actually three big areas where this integration has happened. And it's interesting to think actually that it's been an odd use case for a while. I've said this before, I'm pretty sure I've said it on weekly updates before that it's a bit odd that we had Microsoft Teams and we had Microsoft Dynamics 365 and the two just didn't talk to each other. Um, and there was no integration between them. And they were both from Microsoft and they were both obviously gonna be used by businesses. So uh, it was an odd integration point. I d uh, and it's now looking like that odd integration point is being fixed with actually what is a really solid um, and thorough implementation uh, and integration story. So. Um, I think congrats to the teams that have put this together because I think it's a strong integration story. Um, I, I don't know whether the kind of Salesforce Slack acquisition has kind of forced this to happen or whether it was always going to happen, whether it's accelerated plans. I don't know whether us, you know, everybody working at home has accelerated these plans or whether it was always the case. Um, sometimes just the right thing just takes a long time to get done sometimes. So maybe it's just that story as well. So, but anyway three big um, kind of areas that got announced. The first one is uh, around the new webinar functionality that's coming to Teams. So you'll be able to take that participant list, throw it straight into Dynamics, um, segment it, have it automatically segmented for you, um, and then push them into journeys automatically. That's kind of cool. So if you're already using Dynamics and you're now thinking about using uh, webinars uh, functionality in Teams, just be aware that you can take that participant list and push it straight into Dynamics. Um, the big one I just talked about, so voice chat with AI as well, which we'll talk about in a minute, in Dynamics 365 sales. So you'll be able to take a lead, click click on the lead, and then just call them directly. Um, you'll also be able to see any chats in Teams that are related to this opportunity. Um, so you'll see that kind of show up in Dynamics. The chat window for Teams shows up right inside Dynamics. So you don't have to leave what you're doing in Dynamics to kind of talk to people, um, you know, get, get an opinion or, or, or 
sort of kick off some actions or whatever it is about an opportunity. And then the interesting thing with AI around the call as well is that the, the call that happens in Dynamics um, actually is kind of transcribed for you live. So as you're t kind of talking, as you're talking with somebody, that transcription is happening on the screen in front of you. Now that's not new, we see that in Teams today. Um, but in addition, keywords, key kind of actions, key um, business objects, so um, company names, dates, uh, amounts of money, things like that, um, get pulled out and kind of marked in bold uh, so that you can quickly scan kind of big amounts of transcript and see what's going on. You can kind of take those and put them into the notes of the opportunity as well um, to recall that call happening. So like I say, it's a deep integration. Um, so yeah, it's really powerful. There's a couple of other integration points as well around it meeting apps um, and some messaging extensions as well. So there's lots going on actually to bring Dynamics and Teams together and it's all come in one big announcement. So it kind of feels like a really complete story, which is great. And then finally, um, there's some stuff between Dynamics 365 Commerce and Teams, mostly just task integration. So tasks between the two are synced, which sort of makes sense. They always should be synced, they always should have been synced. And if, I don't, I, I'm not really very big in the Dynamics world, so I don't really know if they were, weren't were synced before. Like it feels weird if they weren't, but whatever. Anyway, now they are synced, so that's good. So yeah, big long blog post on that um, and a video as well. So if that sounds interesting and you wanna dig into it or just see what that integration looks like in Dynamics, um, go watch the video because there's some stuff in there. And also in the blog post, there's a link to the full Ignite video um, if you want all of the detail as well. Finally, um, I will just show you this blog post. I'm gonna put it into the show notes um, as a link. Um, it's the what's new for Microsoft 365 and Teams platform at Ignite. I've already said before, um, I think kind of for me, there weren't loads of Teams platform announcements this time around. And I think you sort of see that kind of in this fairly short blog post actually, which is um, this session here, which is around integrating your apps and processes and uh, talks about these new capabilities for, for the Teams platform. So these are the, the, the Power Platform um, uh, announcements that I sort of referenced and said there was nothing huge. Here they are listed so you can kind of see them. Uh, and then also we spent some time talking about already the, the ACS and Teams interop. And that, that's it for Teams platform announcements at Ignite. So not a big one for Teams platform, um, but the things that were announced I think are, are, are really big. This one, uh, kind of really important and the Dynamics Teams integration I think really important as well um, just for developers to be aware of um, you know plenty of um, plenty of developers work in organizations that have both Teams and Dynamics so um, I, I imagine you'll be aware of this integration happening as well and there's almost certainly going to be development opportunities that come out of this integration um, and the, the fact that um, these things are shared not least of which it paves the way for kind of third party applications to be able to embed Teams functionality into other applications as well. Um, so don't know what the details on that are, but um, yeah, like it'll certainly be interesting to see, you know, if that comes because kind of in this Dynamics integration, it's kind of Microsoft have proven it's possible. It's possible to take the Teams application and embed it in another application and have it work. And there's a good use case for it. There's good, good business sense for doing it. Um, and, and it's what people are asking for. So that kind of functionality, you know, it would be great if that was made available to partners as well. All right, that's everything for me. Um, tried to keep it relatively short, um, even though there was a lot to talk about. There's lots more we could have talked about. Um, but we'll save that for next time. Uh, in the meantime, have a great weekend, whatever it is you're doing, and I will speak to you again next time.